How's it going today? What we're doing today is a 4G shielded metal arc welding or stick welding certification. So it's an overhead uh, groove weld with backing. In order to become certified, the first thing you have to do is a welding procedure specification or WPS commonly referred to. Uh, they use the acronym. So we already wrote a welding procedure specification that kind of gives um, parameters that haven't been proven yet. You're going to prove the parameters through a procedure qualification record or PQR. Now, I'm not going to actually show you how to write this stuff. I'm just going to do the actual welding. So you're going to see me do the 4G cert, and then we're going to have to do a bend test to make sure that it's acceptable. And that's what you're doing, recording in this procedure qualification record. And you can see I got a test plate right here, visual inspection is the first thing you have to do. And then you have to do the bend tests. And I wrote on this paper everything I wanted to cover. So uh, two root bends and two face bends. And the other thing I wanted to say, this is a real certification. This is 100% authentic how you would become certified or how a company would write their procedures to certify their welders. Right from the very beginning, which is what we're doing right now, to the very end where we do destructive tests to make sure that all those parameters are correct. So it's a real certification, all right? So we're gonna do the welding procedure specification, which I already did, it's written, a PQR, which we're gonna do after we do the actual weld, which we're gonna go out in the lab and do the weld. Uh, test plate, visual inspection, we already talked about. Oh, well, actually you have to, pass your visual inspection according to the code book, uh, we're using the AWS D1.1 Structural Steel Welding Code in order to say, okay, it meets everything in that code as a visual inspection. You have to do that before you can go to bend tests. If you don't meet a visual inspection's qualifications, you cannot go to bend tests, all right? So you gotta pass your visual inspection first. And then last, when you're done with the bend tests, to what they're going to give you in an actual certification form is a welder qualification test record or commonly referred to as a WQTR. That's your actual welding cert. So uh, once you get through the WPS, the PQR proves the WPS. The tests that you do in the PQR are then going to make you a certified welder. All right. So what we're going to do now, let's go up here. Oh yeah, and all those documents, I'm going to try and put in PDF format in the video description of this video, so check that out, see if it, I, I was able to do that. I, I've never done that before, I'm assuming you can do that, but I'm just assuming, so. We're gonna try and put the WPS, the PQR, and the WQTR as a PDF in the video description, all right? So right here, this is a mock-up of the actual joint I have written right here. So it's 3 8 plate, it's uh, three inches wide, you need at least seven and a half inches of length in order to do the bend tests. The bends are going to be inch and a half a piece. So you're going to do four of them an inch and a half. So two inch and a half will be three. You got to do that twice. So that's six inches. So you got to have six inches of material to actually do the bend test. The ends of these uh, coupons get cut off roughly around an inch. So you got to have a little bit extra to cut the ends off. All right. So you're going to want at least seven and a half inches long. So basically, you want seven and a half inch long coupons by three inches wide in order to to do the bend test. If they're too short on the three inches, they won't fit in the fixture and they'll just slip it around and you won't be able to bend them. So uh, 60 degree angle, quarter inch uh, root opening, which I did not write. So let's go ahead and write that right here. Quarter of an inch root opening. That makes sense. The backing bar you just tack on, that's quarter of an inch. And then you want to have that be about nine inches long so you can have a little bit of runoff tabs from the beginning and the end of the actual weld. So this is a mock-up of the actual joint that we're going to be doing. And what I'm going to do now is go over to, I, I drew this fill over here, and I'm going to just readjust the camera so you can see that better. So I did another drawing here, and this is the same exact drawing that I did on the left here. It's just filled. I ran this at 130 amps out there and I really liked it. I, I did an overhead, I did the root pass, and I cranked it up a little bit. I typically run around 120. I cranked it up 10 to make sure I got that root pass in right. Because if, if you don't get the root pass in, you're done right off the bat. So I cranked it up to 130 and I really like how it ran. So I'm gonna run probably the whole plate. So all seven of these beads at 130 is what I'm thinking. If I make an adjustment, I'll tell you in the video, but I, I'm pretty sure I liked the way that ran. So I, I kind of ran it a little hot, I guess. A lot of times when people think of overhead, they think you're going against gravity. So you want to, you know, cool down a little bit. But if you move fast enough, I, I like to run it hot in any weld test because that ensures that, that that weld metal is blending in, right? So I just turned it up and I ran nice and nice and fast. So. The bead progression that I usually do in overhead is your root pass is one bead right here, one, then 
uh, your uh, filler pass is a two and three, so you're going to do a two over the one root pass. And then because I do run pretty fast in overhead, I usually go with a, a three bead uh, cover, but with overhead I go with a four bead usually. Um, just because I run so fast, the beads aren't actually as big. So we'll see how it kind of plays out out in the uh, actual lab. But uh, if I can do three, I'll do three, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up having to do four. So uh, it's going to end up being seven beads total and four on the actual cover. So what we're going to do is go out there and um, I did try this on three different machines at 1.30 just to kind of make sure all the machines were running good. I'll show you the three machines that I actually set up for this and uh, we'll go from there and we'll start welding this thing. All right, the first machine that I ran 130 at was a Miller Trailblazer 302 generator welder. I wanted to do it on a number of machines to make sure that my, my amperage was good. So this was the first machine I tried it on, it ran really well. I'll go to the next now. After I ran it on the Trailblazer, I pulled out a Lincoln 275 precision TIG and again, ran it at 130 overhead, ran real nice. And then I went to kind of an old school welder because these are two pretty new welders. And not everybody has new welders, so I wanted to try it on an older welder too. We'll look at that one now. So this is the third welder that I used, and it's just a Miller Shopmaster, kind of an old school welder. And you can see on the dial right in the middle there, it's right at around 130. And all three welders ran really good at 130. The key to overhead is you gotta keep it tight and you gotta keep moving. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual plates. To look at the plates that uh, I beveled. I did two of these before I actually started doing the actual weld test and uh, that's a good look at them right there and I did two rods. Inweld actually brought me some some weld some 7018 so that's the inweld and then we also did Lincoln X caliber and they both ran pretty good so I was pretty impressed with both of them so typically we run X caliber but I thought I'd try the inweld so that's a good look at the uh, plates and we'll get the welding here. So what we got going on here is I'm keeping it straight up and down as far as the angle goes in the middle of the groove. And you can see I got a little bit of a trailing angle there but you got to keep it really tight. And then right at the end here I started getting a little bit of arc blow so I started angling it the other way right about now. See that? To try and get rid of that arc blow. So we just got done with our root pass came in pretty good it's wet in real nice ran at 130 amps I could have probably started on that runoff tab a little further and I got a little bit of arc blow towards the end you can see some big spatter there I'm going to readjust my ground clamp but it, for the most part it went in pretty good and remember you're going to cut the first inch and the last inch off anyways before you go to your bend tests kind of makes up for any nonsense on your start and stops so we're going to move to layer two and bead number two all right, so once we got this going here, you're going to want to do the same trailing angle, but you're going to want to focus a little bit more angle on one side of the actual bevel. And then when you go to your third pass, you're going to focus the angle to the other side of the bevel. It'll make a nice little groove for you. So we're going to wrap this weld up and get on to three here. Okay, here we are looking at pass number two. It went pretty good. I had a little trouble getting it started, but once we got her going, it ran good. The only thing I would take back at this point is I got a little high right there. But that's no big deal. We'll be able to blend that in when we do the next pass. So pass two is in. We're going to go to pass three next. And you can see there's a perfect little valley to put that pass three in. And then we'll start on our covers. All right, so once we get this bead going here, you're going to do the same trailing angle now you're going to want to focus the angle to the opposite side of the bevel that you focused the angle on on the previous bead again keeping it real tight almost to the point where you can feel the rod getting eaten away and keep it moving don't get going slow or you'll end up with a drip all right we just got done with our third pass and our second layer so we did one root two fillers and now usually with overhead I have to do four covers because you have to move a little bit quicker with overhead but you can see that third bead it went in real nice right here that's about as good as it gets for overhead so let's get going on the covers probably going to be four passes I'm going to guess but if we can do it in three we'll do it in three but I'm, I'm going to guess it's going to be four 
All right, once you get the first uh, pass going on your covers, you're going to want to focus it on one side of the bevel again. Angle it that way a little bit, keeping it tight. Again, a little bit of a trailing angle. I tend to finish with almost a leading angle at the end because I was having trouble with arc blow. But All right, that wraps it up. So this is pass number four. It's the first cover pass. Went in real nice, nice tying up there, no undercut, that's what you're looking for. I did get a little high right there because I had some slag drop on me and I panicked a little bit, but it's well within the eighth inch uh, convexity limit. So we're going to get started on pass number five here, the second cover pass, and continue to fill this baby in. All right, we got bead number five going here, and you're going to want to stack that right on the side of uh, bead number four. A little bit more than halfway with uh, with overhead you want to stack it real tight because it's just the way that you, you can't let it wet out as much so it takes a little bit more stacking pretty much the same uh, process as the previous bead all right so we just got done with pass number let me think here five second cover went in pretty good we're getting the pass number six now, and the last pass, pass number seven. So we just got done with pass number six, leaving us a nice little groove here. Get our fourth cover pass in. Six went pretty good. We got a little touch high there. I think it's a little lower. We got a little bit of slag trapped in there. I'm gonna go hit that with the wire wheel. If I hit it with the wire wheel, the weld is so shiny you can't get a camera shot. So I'm gonna do that after I get done uh, previewing bead number seven, I guess. Consider bead number seven previewed. Let's do it. All right, so we got the first three covers in, stacked them up real nice. I ran the bead six in the video in real time. Basically, this last one, you just got to get it in and hopefully have absolutely no undercut on the toes using basically the same techniques we've been doing on the first six passes here. So there we are with our final pass. So layer one was one pass, layer two, the filler passes were two passes, and the cover passes was four passes. And you can see it's tied in real nice. There's no undercut. Uh, I got a little hot at the end, but it's all right. We're gonna nip that off, and we're gonna go into a bend test now. So right now, the visual appearance is acceptable, so we are gonna go into destructive testing to certify the process in the welder.
we just got these all cut in the bandsaw. Now we got to grind everything flush. So backing bar off and the face of the weld's got to be ground right down. We're going to do that with a hard stone. Then we're going to hit it with a 36 grit flapper to smooth it out. So we just got done doing our grinding. I stamped two R's, two faces, so we're going to do two root bends and then two face bends. So let's go over and bend these up. the four bends we just did two roots two faces the two roots are on the right the two faces are on the left and I welded 4G on it and I clear coated because I thought it would make it easier to see I'm not sure if it did or not but we're going to zoom in down here on the welds and the one on the left this is the first root looks like there's a crack in the video but it's not actually all the way through see right there it never actually breaks the plane, it's just an indent. I know it looks like a crack, I'm trying to get it, it's not going to let me zoom in, you'll have to just trust me. But anyways, there it is. Uh, we, what we have to do now is write the welding procedure specification, the procedure qualification record, and the welder qualification test record. And that is a certified welding process, and the person that does the weld is now a certified welder in 4G. So if you like how we did that, hit the like button I guess. Uh, that's the beginning or that's the start right to the end of a welding procedure to become a certified welder hopefully all that makes sense thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld and we are out of here